All right. No opportunity, no crime. It's been a while. Let's get back to this. According to you, Mia, the only way I could have entered the hospice is through the executive way. Ooh. Classic music. But given the depth of the wound and the power of the bow, we know the killer shot from the patient way. However, there's a problem. We need an employee key card to move between the two wins. And the record showed only two cards being used that night. Winters and Volkov's. But it's impossible for me to have shot anyone, given your logic thus far. Might take me a bit to get up to snuff on the... Uh, hmm. This argument is pretty solid. It does seem impossible for one restricted to the executive wing to have murdered Bishop. But if this reasoning is as impenetrable as it looks, why did he hold on to it for so long? So we is in Charlie's logic, and he knows it. That's why he didn't say anything. I'm prepared to climb, because I'm no god. I'm not letting you get away. Oh no, you're gonna be really loud music now. Why you... Why can't you give me the normal cross-examination music? Alright. Give me the very loud epic music. And take this shift in focus here to mean you accept the possibility of my theory. What choice do I have? I can't argue against devil's proof. Maybe if your theory was in any way substantiated, it'd be a different story. But hey, let me make something crystal clear here, Mia. I'm not scared of you. No matter what you think you can accomplish here, there's no way you can pin this on me. There was no concrete evidence against Graves, and there was sure as hell ain't any against me. The struggle you want, but in the end, you won't get anywhere. Oh, we'll see about that. You'd think I'd have grown tired of this dorky garbage years ago. But, nah, here I am. Now, back to the important stuff. Less trash talk and more murder solving, please. Thanks, buddy. Get the wound power of the crossbow? Prosecutor, can you confirm what he's saying? I sure can. Basically, the force generated by a crossbow bolt depends on the type of bolt and the tension of the string. We know the specs of the bow and the bolt, and we also know the depth of Bishop's wound. With these things in mind, we can calculate how far the bolt would have traveled before impacting. And by calculate, I mean we just ran a ballistics test. For the wound to have been as we found it, the bolt had to have traveled between 35 and 45 meters. And by 35 to 45 meters, I mean 150 to 150 feet, because the Queen don't run these lands no more. Yep. The point is, the only location that that far from the executive wing rooftop is the patient wing rooftop. Plus, the crossbow was found there, so it's not like the shot came from anywhere else. That makes sense to me. I've only made it this far because I've questioned every assumption. Was there a way for the culprit to have disguised the specs of the murder weapon? That question I don't think we have an answer to. Probably not. Is the keycard really necessary to cross that pedway? It is. There's a door partway that only unlocks with the keycards. And since I know you want to ask, the door closes and locks automatically. What if we don't keep spare cards around, there's no bypass system, and there's no way to trick it? Point taken. There's no other way to get from one wing to the other, besides this pedway. Not unless you went outside and around to the other, to the other entrance. It seems like Charlie had no way of moving between wings, but I wonder if that's really true. Not really. We don't have any evidence. Two guys being sent night Winters and Volkovs. Oh, there's someone who's... There's someone in the comments insistent that, uh... Volkov's gonna become relevant again. Is this the time? About this record. It's actually pretty similar to the security camera from earlier. Thanks to the storm, we have no actual security data to look for. But the card reader does internally record the ID numbers of the cards that can swipe through it. 
There are a few extraneous IDs from the staff that were on site earlier today. At a certain point, the list thins out to just Volkov and Winters. In other words, even if Charlie had a spare card or something, he didn't use it. There's still the possibility that one of the nurses has an, was an accomplice, isn't there? <laughs> hey! Kurt was only able to get into the hospice by picking the lock on the employee door. Yeah, we proved that earlier. Excuse me, Kurt and I, as you tell it. Either way, if we were working with one of the nurses, why didn't we have them let us in? Huh? Uh, oh. Um. Hmm. I have to read that it doesn't make much sense at a, at a glance. The reasons for the compass is still worth considering. No. Damn. So it must have been... It must have his back to the wall. Charlie's argument is really solid. Clearly there's weakness here somewhere, but I don't think it's a contradiction necessarily. I get the feeling that there's a question being asked in the testimony that Detective Klein really doesn't want me to answer. He changed up my approach. Instead of looking for a problem, I need to look for a solution. Possible to move between wings? Is it possible to kill from the executive wing? I'm presenting as a theory. If I prove that the answer to either of those questions is yes, I win. I have a theory here, but we're going to come back to this briefly in a moment. Okay, well, I think we are going to try. Ballistics test, 35, 45 meters. Depth of the wound inspects the crossbow. Uh... Guys, the specs of the murder weapon. I have a theory, but I don't know if we can prove it. This is going to ask me to present evidence, isn't it? crossbow was intact, too. So. I've saved, so let's try it. We did the map makes sense, but couldn't the murderer have used this to throw off the variables? Uh, maybe it's the weather report? Mia's life bar is at point A, which is X units away from zero. And Mia's life is approaching zero at the rate of a jillion units per second. How long will it be to take? How long will it be for me at the game over? Gotta eat you. Fair enough. Ah, uh, evidence that someone collaborated. Hmm. Need to look at the timeline. Yeah, the crime. Graves arrived at 11.30, half an hour early. Graves and Winter stayed until midnight. Defendant made his way to the rooftop. Probably Montclair. Graves attacked Montclair with steel pipe. Bishop entered the adjacent wing. And our theory is Bishop entered with chart. Now we're saying... Kill for the executive wing.
could use the hospice layout. No, shut up. Getting between the two wings. Okay, it's gonna take some more thought. Or alternatively, maybe I'm overthinking this. Just ran a ballistics test. So all they have is all they have is the weight of the bolts, the depth of the wound. Traces on it, and Take that. okay. That's some. Should I have to come for the patient wing roof? I wonder about that. I know better than to doubt you out of principle at this point, Mia. But really, unreliable though he may be, Detective Klein isn't lying about this. The wound and the range line up. Heck, McLean said the same thing when he took the stand all these hours ago. I remember. I don't doubt that the crossbow found, out, found on the patient wing is consistent with the wound. But... There's something odd about this whole situation, isn't there? There's a question that's been floating in the back of my mind since that very first testimony. Why did the killer use a crossbow? It's... certainly not an orthodox weapon. Precisely. So then why? Why did a more conventional weapon, like a rifle or something? I've wondered about this for the longest time, but I believe I now have an answer. Corbett elected to use a bow for her gun because a crossbow has a certain trait that the gun lacks. This special characteristic that I'm referring to is the fact that a crossbow... Oh. Silent. Has reusable ammo. Has no right... Silent is a plus. Waterproof is a plus in this situation. All three of these are pluses. All three of these, all three of these are true and probably feasible answers, but... The obvious one... See, the theory that I was thinking of was that you can just... You can probably... Stab someone. With a crossbow bolt. And mimic a crossbow shot from a distance. So that's no rifling mark, so you can't tell it was actually fired by the crossbow. The crossbow bolt has no rifling mark. Rifling marks? What the heck are rifling marks? The fingerprint of a gun, basically. Grooves on the inside of the barrel leave marks on bullets. Every gun has a unique fingerprint, so you can tell which gun fired which bullet, you dig? Yeah, exactly. What this means for our cases, we have no idea if the bolt that killed Bishop was fired using the crossbow found at the hospice. Couldn't there have been a second bow? Objection! All right, slow down, Mia. Hell, maybe Charlie brought the crossbow. Stabbed. Stabbed Bishop with a crossbow bolt. No, maybe... Alright, slow down, Mia. If there was a secret second crossbow or whatever... Kurt's wound still concretely proves that the bolt was fired from the patient wing. That's only if the two bows were identical. Let's think about this for a second. If there was a second bow, then the bow we found must have been left as a decoy. What does this decoy bow tell us? The culprit was on the patient wing rooftop. In other words, the true location of the killer was somewhere else. And the only other place with a line of sight on the executive wing roof. Is the executive wing roof? It's possible the true killer was right there on the executive wing with the victim. In this situation, the true murder weapon must have been a second, less powerful crossbow. Objection! 
is a little bit silly, but yeah, no. Too strategy just to say the craziest thing that pops into your head? There's no way this works. I know it sounds unlikely, but it is a possibility. Maybe. But you're too quick to discard the patient wing crossbow as meaningless. Even if it isn't the murder weapon, the killer still had to have gone to the patient wing to plant it there. I didn't have access to the patient wing, according to your theory, Mia. Damn. He's right. But that's okay. It's not over yet. I didn't think I was going to break through in order one fell swoop anyways. The proposed existence of a second crossbow was only the first step. Now to follow through. Uh, pardon me. Uh, apologies, but there are a few things I don't understand about your train of thought, Miss Fay. Oh, uh, you're here too, Nathaniel. What is it? From the very beginning, you posted that f you posited that fireman and this bishop fellow entered the hospice together. But, uh, why? Why? Perhaps this came up earlier, and I've merely forgotten. But why did they go to the hospice together? If the fireman is indeed the killer, as you say, and he would have had the weapon with him, would Mr. Bishop wonder what his partner was doing with such a thing? Or with two such things? Wouldn't he have realized something was wrong? Th that the hell? Those are really good points! Wow! Excellent catch, Mr. Montclair. Looks like you've got three questions to answer now, Mia. Why did Charlie and the victim enter the executive wing together? Why did Bishop not react to Charlie carrying two crossbows with him? And finally, how could Charlie have planted the long-range bow on the patient wing? Good luck. Objection! I don't see the point in getting lost in the small stuff anymore obviously willing to bend the minor facts to suit her, like you were the opportunity. Let's get our priorities straight and focus on the big issue here. Mia, yeah, I asked you to show how the culprit could have gone to the patient wing to plant the bow. If you can't prove that, then you can't prove anything. Okay, this got really bad really fast. Maybe I need to ditch this two bows theory. But, am I going nuts? Charlie just try and distract me from Montclair's questions? Could it be? Was Montclair's inter interjection actually bad for him? Why would that be? Usually he's, he'd have taken Montclair's point and ran with it. But the, the whole, uh, there was a second murder weapon thing was pretty damn crazy. But maybe... Maybe there's something even crazier to uncover here. We're waiting, Miss Faye. Yes, yes, okay, let's just think about this. If he was trying to distract me there just now, the answer to Montclair's question must be really telling. I have no idea where I'm going with this, so let's just consider things hypothetically for now. Why did they enter the hospice together? I don't have a clue, so let's focus on the other question. Why was Bishop alarmed by Charlie bringing the two bows into the hospice? The craziest way, the way this could actually make sense. Oh, our choices were. Bishop was already dead. Bishop was an accomplice. There were other people there. If Bishop was an accomplice, then... Both of them brought crossbows. To do a thing. Oh. Is this a thing... Uh... Like, they both showed up to kill Sheol silently in a place that's relatively public, so they brought weapons which were relatively silent. So, that's dude Bishop was an accomplice, right? No, Kurt Bishop was an accomplice. Not to his own murder, of course. That would be, I mean, that'd just be stupid. But... Kurt Bishop thought he and Charlie were going to murder somebody else. Is 
there's even any one of those two would have went dead at the hospice that day? Obviously, Sheil. Huh? Wait a minute. Would it be? But that? No, it checks out. Is it possible that the real reason Charlie and the victim went to the hospice that night was to murder Shield? What did you What did you say? Shield told all of you that they would be on the patient wing roof on the night of the murder. If we set aside the outcome of that night and just look at the how the pieces were arranged, Shield was supposed to be on one roof, and the two men brought ranged weapons to an adjacent roof. Think about it this way. Their interactions are obvious. Their intentions are obvious. <laughs> First Grave, then Damar, and then me, and now Kurt of all people. You didn't notice me, and she wasn't the one who ended up dead. It was my partner. But you said you told Bishop about the call from Shield. I think you lied about that and let your partner walk into danger unaware. Whatever the two of you had planned that night took Shield's presence into consideration. Exactly. He and I went to keep surveillance on the place, like I said. Surveillance my ass. What did James Memorial to murder Shield, didn't you? Sorry, Mia, but I have to agree with Detective Climb on this one. There's more to this story than just Shield. Remember the letter, Bishop. Remember the letter Bishop received? According to this letter, there was supposed to be someone else on the executive wing that night. More to the point, Bishop was invited to meet with this individual. So we can't say for certain what Bishop's intentions truly were. No one else was there that evening, so we can probably write this off as a trap. Whether this letter was a trap or not is actually besides the point. Bishop actually believed that going to the hospice was dangerous. He wouldn't have gone. He did, however. So he must have perceived this letter as a sincere. In short, I think it's safe to assume that Bishop expected to meet the senator in the executive wing. And sadly, that contradicts your idea that Bishop and Klein planned to kill Shield. How so? Well, for one, they knew there would be a witness at the scene. Given that the Senator gave Bishop the NX Zero case file, they might have also wanted Shield dead. Maybe. But they couldn't know what this individual was planning beyond that they'd be there. I can't imagine two LAPD detectives plotting a murder around such a blatant wildcard, can you? I... can't really imagine that either. Was I wrong? Damn it. We've wrapped everything up neatly. The stupid letter has been giving us the runaround since the very beginning. It would be really easy to claim that this letter is fake. No, it's not fake because the senator really gave all those files to Bishop. Either... Either we're missing something in this letter. Bishop's motivations don't make sense. Where Charlie Klein really isn't the culprit. Can't be one of those three. They don't want to have to think about those last two, so let's focus on the letter for right now. This letter. Could we have missed something, somehow? Seems pretty straightforward in its meaning, but it's undeniably vague about the details. What part of this letter we might have misinterpreted? So the type letter addressed to the victim found in his desk at the precinct after the murder. It's either the set we got recipient, contents, or sender. It's gotta be either the sender or the recipient, I think. We say recipient. Not to address to detective, but not detective Kurt Bishop specifically. That being the case, we know the sender gave the recipient the NXO files, like which Bishop had. Also, the letter was found at his desk at the LAPD precinct, so there's that. Okay, not recipient. Sender? 
Cosmonaut isn't a moniker, so the Senate doesn't identify themselves in this letter. Either the implication is that the Senate's identity would be obvious to Bishop. There's also this part about being a very poor murderer. I don't know what, don't know what to make of that. Contents? So now we've been looking at this, talking about this letter as though the Senate wanted to meet with Bishop. It's not exactly accurate, is it? The implication here is that the Senate had some reason to be on the roof regardless of Bishop. As no one showed up though, it's impossible to know if this reason was legitimate. Huh? Not entirely following, but it was found at the precinct. Senator packaged the NXO case file to the recipient. They were going to be on the executive wing. His identity was supposed to be obvious. They're a murderer. Sent the NXO case file to Bishop. Wait, what? Doesn't that person fit all these criteria? Uh. Fine? No? Shield? No? Bishop. Uh-oh. I think we, uh... I think we might have made a mistake. I don't think Bishop received this letter. I think Bishop sent this letter. D come again? How does that make any sense at all? It's addressed to Bishop. Not quite. The letter is actually addressed to Detective. I'm pretty sure the detective in question here is not Kurt Bishop. It was found at Kurt's desk. Of course it was sent to him. It will all make sense in a second. The detective that was actually supposed to receive this letter is... You? Mr. Dmitry Volkov? Damn him. I always do hit something to it. That's not... That's not what we said at all. Oh, no? Might as well... Might, might as well have been. It would have been just as raw. Give this one some more thought. McLean? Hmm. Hey, Bryce McLean? What's he got to do with anything? Rice and... Hmm. It's not a trick question. He's the person in charge of solving this Bishop's mysterious death. Even if Kurt Bishop knew there was a risk in going to the hospice that night, he knew there was a chance he might not come back. Sender's name at the bottom. Cosmonaut. You know what this is? Hard not to with how much of a commotion you and your assistant were making over it. I thought the person who sent this letter gave Bishop a record of their investigation into NXO. The opposite is true. Kurt Bishop was giving his investigation to us. It went to be a lead. Supposed to show us why he had been ill. This letter was supposed to aid the inevitable investigation. Oh, and that was my idea. I'm taking credit for this. You should, Diego. You were right. I only misread this letter because the other half of it got held up in the mail. This package with the NXO case file and Bishop's name of the label had shown up in the precinct. The true purpose is a dying message wouldn't have been misconstrued. If nothing ended up happening. Bishop could have just gone to work as normal and tossed it. You're, you're kidding, right? This letter also admits that Bishop was planning to murder someone. I'm confirming my theory. 
an even better angle. No one called Bishop of the Hospice. How could anybody have known he'd be there? Isn't it strange that no one knew where he'd be, and yet he still ended up murdered? Oh, wait. There was one person who admitted to going with Bishop to the Hospice that night. It was you, Charlie. While you're busy making things up, Contra method to plant the crossbow on the patient wing. Because if you can't even do that, then none of this conversation even matters. Don't you just toss the thing? Technically, maybe, but the bow was found at the far side of the roof, almost 40 meters away. It's true. I don't know how the long range bow could have been planted. Or at least, I did. Although my theory has evolved, but Bishop has an accomplice. Our perspective, our per perspective changes. In particular, we need to reconsider this piece of evidence. Bishop has an accomplice. Uh, this is going to be... Fishing line and a hook. He had a fishing line and a hook on him. Bishop brought a number of things with him into the hospice. With the possibility that Bishop intended to kill Shield, some of these things might be relevant. Like what, his cigarettes? Give me a break, there's nothing here. I'm just gonna go straight for it. Uh, fishing line. I suddenly feel like I should have put this all together ages ago. So who the fishing line was found on Kurt Bishop's body? Fishing line. Is there any object in this world, no? More bird of mystery esque than goddamn fishing line. <laughs> Small bombs, perhaps? Nonetheless, I see your point. I think this fishing line factors into their plan to murder Shield somehow, is that it? That's exactly right. I've seen several different uses for fishing line and murders before. I've seen it used in traps to create locked rooms and even move bodies. Is it possible that this fishing line could have been used to move the crossbow to the patient wing? At the end of the day, it's just string me. It's not made of magic. At best, I might be able to bridge the two rooftops together. Even then, you'd need some way to fasten the line to the opposite building. Well, Bishop wasn't just carrying the line. There's also a fishing hook. That's hardly suspicious. It's just your everyday triple hook. You and I have a couple. A triple hook? Wait, isn't it the kind that looks like a grappling hook? No down, Mia. It's not like Klein and Bishop had anything that could fire a grappling hook. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Everything's falling into place. That's right. A lack of rifling noise was the only advantage the crossbow would afford them. We could have easily fastened the hook and fishing line to both and fired it at the opposite building. God, now you're just being stupid. I don't seriously believe any of this garbage to you. See, the amazing thing about this is that, uh... Like, the whole two crossbow things seem ridiculous, but they immediately justified it in a way that makes it make sense now. Impressive. Well, it's just believing it's garbage to you. This is all a dream, isn't it? <sighs> I would have confessed ages ago if I'd known things would be this, would be this entertainment. <laughs> Thanks, Tamara. That's all fine and dandy, Leah, but what does any of this actually mean? You're right, and they did intend to bridge the gap with this fishing line. What for? Let's see how a grappling hook could have been used to move the murder weapon. I'm not at first glance, but I assure you it's very possible. You're bluffing. Prove it. As you wish. Given the circumstances of the crime scene and the possibility of my grappling hook setup, 
could have very easily moved the crossbow by using a tight rope. Slide, tight rope, swing, slingshot. Tight rope. No, that's not right. Remember, put the two rooftops only by a single thread. Okay, this, this, is, this is just semantic. Slide. Slide. A, a slide. Make more sense if you visualize the crime scene. Ropeway! In the executive wing, we have the hunters and their weapons. In the patient wing, we have their prey. I believe the original plan was first the culprits would use the long range crossbow to murder shield. Then the magic happens. Whee! Again, using the long range bow, a second bolt is fired. This one has the hook and fishing line attached. Easy to simply shoot past the patient wing and catch the hook on the far corner. From there, all they had to do was hold the line taut. If the patient wing is shorter, a slide is made. Given how many closed holes there are in these crossbows, we could easily slide one down the line. Why? When the crossbow was above the spot they wanted, they just had to cut or release the line. The bow would fall onto the patient wing, and the hook would fall to the ground to be picked up later. Just like that, Clyde and Bishop have planted the short-range bow on the patient wing rooftop. Now the short-range bow gives the impression that the killer shot shield from the patient wing roof. Who would suspect the fiddle bow actually came from the right executive wing? But in reality, this isn't what happened. For some reason, Charlie Klein knew Sheol was not going to be there that night. For some reason, Charlie Klein had a different plan in mind. He used a short range crossbow to murder his partner in cold blood. And he executed the plan they had to come up with. They had they, they executed the plan they had come up with together and backwards. Instead of using the slide to plant the short range bow, he sent the long range bow along the line. His body was now in the executive wing, the long range bow was needed to disguise his position. And while it's true, the hook and line found on Bishop's body couldn't have been used for this trick. Charlie planned to betray Bishop all along, it's likely he brought his own set of line. It would have been risky if he had to disturb the body to get to the tools. He needed to hide his trick. As I mentioned earlier, Charlie's escape attempt would have been foiled by the flood. Nowhere to go, he had no other choice but to wait until morning. Imagine he spent the next seven hours curled up in that landing at the top of the stairs. Just feet from his dead friend. Savage. Not. It's not true. Charlie, it's over. Give it up. No, you can't. <laughs> evidence. See some evidence. Uh oh. Evidence, huh? I think the letter Bishop wrote is more than enough to prove your guilt. The letter Bishop wrote? I have seen nothing of the sort. 
sure that interpretation suits your theory. But is it true? There's no evidence, there's no evidence to suggest it was Kurt who wrote this and not another party. So I show you evidence that proves Kurt Bishop wrote it. Can you come clean? Turn the piece upside down. Piece upside down. What? No, no, this is just another bluff. I don't have a got a thing. Eh? It's one of the force, probably. Practitions are in order, Charlie. You pulled this off brilliantly. Eh? No forensic evidence. Most of much more likely suspects. A few tricks here and there. Even the nature itself tried to cover for you. In all respects, this really was the perfect crime. So you thought. But your expression shows the reality of it. The badge and ID numbered again. Hmm? Couldn't control everything. The bar was the first fracture. Kurt Bishop will be the last. This ridiculous, complicated game comes to a close with a single mundane move. Bishop wrote that letter. I can prove it with this piece of evidence. simple as the, uh, I guess it is, letter being the key to, uh, eh? Hmm. Took me a little bit to remember this little detail. This case file was originally stored in an LAPD ar archive at a library downtown. Imagine they just. Let, I don't imagine they just let just anyone in there. So whoever took this file out, like they had to show police ID. What do you do is check the library's records. Oh, okay. We had a discussion with Diego at one point, didn't we? Prove that Kurt Bishop had the case file. It proved that he wrote the letter. He wrote the letter. It, it proved that he went to the hospice to murder Sheil. Proved that he went to murder Sheil. It proved that the only one that could have murdered him was the only person who knew he'd be there. His partner in both law and crime. You, Charlie Klein. Is that all you've got? Oh? Sorry, but that letter alone isn't enough. My fingerprints on the weapon? Oh. Was there blood on any of my things? Of course not. Calling tomorrow's truthfulness into question is just beating a dead horse. Suspicions aren't unfounded, I'll give you that much. In a court of law? There's no way your case holds up. I think I understand where you're coming from, Charlie. It's not so much about us, but you. Remember how earnestly you told me you were trying to wash your hands of Annex Zero? You'd be acknowledging that you betrayed the modest life you've carved out for yourself. You'd be acknowledging that you're unable to move on, 
that it still claws at your insides. But, unfortunately, you don't have any choice in the matter. But this isn't a court of law, and I'm not trying to convince a judge or a jury. I'm trying to convince just one person. Isn't that right, Zero? Uh-oh. Correct. Hello? Huh? I would advise against any sudden movements. I warned you that I would not waste any more ammunition. Yeah. You and I are going to play a game. Well, actually, it will just be you. Maybe with Russian roulette, Thyron. But you... You are going to explain yourself. Every time you say something that I deem unhelpful, I pull the trigger. Clear? Are you out of your mind? Whoa, hey, 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 hey. Not too unlucky, I see. Your chances are now one in five. Did you kill Kurt Bishop? No, it wasn't me. What? What is it? What the hell do you want me to say? The truth. One in four. Why did you abandon your plan to kill Shield? Like I said, that didn't happen. None of that happened. Are you Shield? What? No, I'm not Shield. God damn it! Is there anyone here who's not trying to throw me under the damn bus? I'm not Shield, I'm not a murderer. To be frank, Charlie, I simply don't believe you. I thought I would put the bullet in the sixth chamber and give you a chance. But you don't seem to want to cooperate. So I might as well expedite things. Maybe I can't prove that you are S.H.I.E.L.D. But, at this point, I'm willing to gamble. This is my final mercy to you, fireman. Give me one reason why I shouldn't pull the trigger. I see. Pity. Farewell. Hey, just, just wait a second. No. Please, wait. Just wait. Fine. Fine. I admit it. It was me. I killed him. I, I killed Kurt, but he killed me. I had no choice. I'm not... I'm not Shield. Please, you've got to believe me. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus Christ, my dude. Case closed. Where do we go from here? Old haunts of the things that live there. It's part seven. How on earth is this going to go? This one started right away. Interesting. Explain it. How? <laughs> How do you even explain something like this? Eh. Well. I guess it started with a dream. But you don't need to hear about that. I just need to hear about when I woke up. Oh. I wonder. Uh 
hi. Have you, perhaps, mentioned our earlier conversation to anyone yet, Fireman? Your friend, Detective Bishop, maybe? <laughs> I'm just teasing you. There's no need to worry. I wouldn't be upset at all if you had told anyone. In fact, your disobedience is well within my expectations. Now, I'm sure you're extremely curious as to the reason why I'm calling you so late at night, yet again. Well, regarding Mr. Bishop, he has become something of a thorn in my side, and I can no longer afford to overlook his unfortunate fascination with me. I hate to ask such a favor of you, Fireman, but I need the good detective taken out of the picture. And I can think of no one better for the job than you. You will murder Detective Curtis Allen Bishop. And then you will deliver his body to me at the hospice when you come to our meeting. You will come to visit me, won't you? How long now? That's four days or so? <laughs> the clock is ticking. I wonder what kind of expression you're making right now, Fireman. Knowing you, I imagine you're already planning something rebellious. So be it. I certainly can't stop you from refusing my request. But it would be a shame if I didn't get to see your quick thinking in action once again. You always were the most popular player. And no wonder. Ah, oh, a shame indeed. Perhaps, instead, I should arrange for you to make a second appearance on the show. Call it a cameo if you want. A nod to returning fans. What do you think, Fireman? Get lost. Try to sleep on it if you can. I very much look forward to seeing you once again. One way or another. Pleasant dreams. Oh, God damn. It's more or less what he told me. Uh, just a quick look at our evidence here. Police ID. Guess I don't need this anymore. We're playing as Kurt, huh? We're playing... Uh, sorry. Yeah, we are playing as uh, Charlie. Well, holy shit. Investigator for Kurt's murder? Victim, college detective, senior nurse, daughter of Patricia Markowitz, a.k.a. Doc. So, Charlie knows right away. Petrie, Poppet, ready to kill Donald Graves, ex-military. Okay. With, maybe it's a mixture. Federal prosecutor, allegedly. Graves' lawyer, theoretically, she may or may not actually have a law degree. Associate of MFA almost certainly lacks a law degree. Teddy? Attacked by Graves? Hmm. I... I had no intention of just doing what he told me to. Not until... Not when I pulled the trigger, really. Thought thought things would work out. We had a plan. To kill Sheil. It was a good one. The crossbows. The fishing line. I really thought 
it was going to work. Afterwards, it obviously had to do with Shio. So I wouldn't Kurt and I would get the case. Could clean up loose ends. Scrub the security footage. Could get away with it. And Shio clearly didn't suspect anything, so... She could still take him by surprise. We got to that rooftop. I looked at the patient wing. Through the crossbow scope. I knew I'd screwed up. I could see it was someone lying still on the roof. No sign of shield. No hope for our plan. For me. Remember Kirk turned to me. He turned to me and said... It appears we've missed our chance. I don't... I don't remember pulling the trigger. Just like he just... fell over. I stood there for a while. I remember hoping that I'd get struck by lightning or... something. At some point, I guess I dragged myself downstairs. Found the first floor flooded. To be honest, I don't remember what I did after that. Not of nothing, I think. I hadn't exactly delivered Kurt to Sheol, but who knew if Sheol had even been there that night? Maybe I'd... Maybe I'd be alright. Maybe he'd leave me alone. It wouldn't matter. I'd be going into a cage. The LAPD figured out what I'd done. Eventually I came up with the idea of working Kurt's plan in reverse. It took me hours to think of it. The rest is... All pretty self-evident, I guess. So if we're done here, I'd like a few minutes to myself first. Hopefully that's not asking too much. How do things shake out from here? What did you say? I said, why don't we kill him? You don't... You're not talking about Sheol, are you? Of course I'm talking about Sheol. Are we not just discussing him? Or did I miss a cue again? No, oh, you... Damn it, Kurt. What the hell are you talking about? It's been suggested that we kill him. Sheol, that is. I was not speaking in metaphor. I have deconstructed many a crime in my day, but not once have I built one for myself. Suppose I'll need to reverse my thinking. What an intriguing puzzle. They called Kurt Bishop the uh, Professor Layton of Crime. Seriously considering it, aren't you? A senseless question. What? It makes you think something like that is even possible. Possible or not? It may be necessary. You appear distraught, Charles. A hell of a suggestion to drop on a guy, Kurt. Was it? My apologies. Do you know why I became a policeman, Charles? What's that got to do with anything? wondered about it, I'm sure. Work doesn't suit me, does it? Can you imagine it? Me, handing someone a speeding ticket, scolding jaywalkers. Corralling protesters, arresting drunkards, or whatever other inane services our colleagues provide. It's hard to picture, yeah? 
I agree. And yet, here I am. LAPD detective. Homicide. The difference between myself and those other men, Charles, is that, broadly speaking, I don't care. I don't care about law. I don't care about order. I don't care about the people or our community. To be frank, I don't really care about the paycheck either. No. My professional motivation comes from a simple desire to see everything put into its proper place. Criminals should receive punishment for their misdeeds. As a matter of course. And yet, many do not. For me, this is a source of constant of constant irritation. To that end, I uphold the law. It is a tool. I do not see a way to put Sheol into his proper place. Using law. Because as you and I well know, Charles, law is not equivalent. Evidence suggests Shield is both wealthy and well-connected. He will have the best lawyers. He will have monetary influence. He will have more than a fighting chance of getting away with everything. For my own entirely selfish reasons, I do not want to give him that chance. Which is my reasoning. And so, I ask again, why don't we kill him? It's a very good question. I respect that man. Hence, the line of his letter that says, I pushed him to self, I'm a terrible murderer. So I curt for everything. Roped you into this. I stabbed you in the back. Then I tried to run from it. Now it... Well, it looks like the whole trade was for nothing. Sorry for... being so weak. And I'm sorry I never told you about that second phone call. Thought my faith in you outweighed my fear of Sheol. Guess I thought wrong. Sorry. Is this it? Is it over? Am I finally, finally getting what I deserve? Hmm? Someone's coming. With footsteps that heavy, it could only be. Nathan? Varman? Uh, no. Charlie? Same difference. I don't believe that's true. Isn't it? You've been calling me Farming this whole time. Uh, yes. My thoughts sometimes get scrambled. I wasn't thinking about it, clearly. I realize now that I may have been dredging up unpleasant memories. Forgive me. I was in error. I'd like to be left alone for a while, if you don't mind. Of course, Charlie. My apologies for the disruption for the disturbance. But there was something I wanted to tell you, and it wouldn't be appropriate to wait. I want to tell you that I'm sorry. I'm sorry I never noticed that weight on your shoulders, Charlie. I'm sorry I never realized you needed help. Or a friend. And I'm sorry I... Let me stop you right there. I never asked for help. I never wanted help. But I rather think you needed... Says who? You? I barely even know you, Nathan. Everything was fine until Shield stuck his nose in. Things were good. It wasn't your fault, Charlie. It... <sighs> it is. Categorically. And for fuck's sake, man, you live in 24-hour medical care. You have it worse than I ever did. I wonder. Do you believe I am at fault for my own situation? What? Oh no, come on, man. I'm not in the mood for this crap. Seriously. Too bad. I'm not letting you off that easy. Speaking for myself, my condition is indeed my own fault. I was unable to withstand the guilt. But, curious, curiously, I truly believe the blame for your friend's death lies beyond you, Charlie. I suspect you disagree on both accounts. Am I wrong? No. You're right. You 
you and I adhere to the same contradictory double standards, don't we? Our situations aren't even remotely the same. Exactly the same. We've ruined our lives, you and I. Or so we both believe. At least you only hurt yourself. Is that what you think? I... I am really not in the mood for this. <sighs> what an adorable conversation you're having. Pardon the intrusion. Really? Really not in the mood for this? Ah, Pop, it's been too long. You've been well, I trust. But you, I'm not here to commiserate, but that's why it's what you're about to ask. There's work to be done. You're still locked in here, if you haven't noticed. But, Damara, think about what he's been through in the past hour. We should give him a break. Give him a break. Do you realize the others are over there deciding what to do with him? Sit here and mope if you want, but this trial is coming to an end. Before it does, I'd like to bleed you for what you're worth, Charlie. Yeah, pragmatic as ever. Meaning what, exactly? Vince is now an interrogation. He's already told us everything tomorrow. In broad strokes. But the devil is in the details. Isn't he, Klein? What do you actually want? I told you. This trial will end soon. It'd be much better to end things with a bang instead of a whimper, don't you think? Don't you agree? Right. Look. If I knew who Shio was, none of this would have ever even happened. Can't give you what I don't have. And I'll take what I can. You're you're pretty stuck on this, huh? That's unlike you. Turns out detective work is actually quite a bit of fun. Who knew? Maybe I'll put my resume in at your office, Charlie. They are down two whole detectives, after all. There's really no need to antagonize the man. <sighs> Shut up, Nathan. Honestly. Is empathy really warranted here? He's a murderer, you know. So it does our mind that I tried to kill Donald that night. And I may yet succeed, depending. So where's my sympathy? Is a murderer worthy of sympathy? Where's my sympathy? No pathos for your old partner. I do not believe the fireman is cruel at heart. Rather, unlike yourself, I might add. <laughs> oh ho. I'm cruel now, am I? My, how nostalgic. It certainly has been a while since we've spoken together. Just the three of us, I mean. I suppose acquaintances tend to drift apart when there are no murders to plan. How sad. I take it back. Addiction's a good look on you tomorrow. And I'm sure handcuffs will suit you just the same, Vyman. <laughs> Would it ask me any damn questions or what? Yes, I think this is an excellent opportunity to change the topic. <laughs> Best of friends, we three. I asked to be left alone, and this is what I get. I guess that's karma. She'll call you a second time. Alright. I think this is as good a point as any to leave off. On. The next video. Next time. The interrogation of Charlie Klein. By his old pals. Maybe since we're commiserating amongst our old uh, dead and breakfast pals. Maybe we will finally get some more details about the dead and breakfast. It is entirely possible. We shall see. So until next time. Till then.